Hi and welcome. The goal of this episode is to validate data on server, send back error status and messages, and display these errors to user. So first, let's create server-side route for signup. For that, let's go to server index.js file. And right here, after we define app, we're gonna use route. And signing user up is just another fancy name for creating new user records. So we need to create post request to users. So here we define that we will have API users and we will have this users variable and we're going to import this route users from routes users. So now let's create it. We have routes users and to create route first we need to input express that we're going to do all the time when we need to create new route. So we import express we define in router as express.router and we export default this router. So now we can define the post request. So we do router post and just a slash because that's what we want to do, users. We want to make the post users request. So it takes request, response, and we have our function here. So good, we have our route. Now we need to get data from post request. And for this, we need to parse request data. So we need to install another middleware. So let's go to terminal and we install with safe body parser. So now we need to use it. Go back to editor to index.js. We're going to input body parser from body parser. And here we'll add app use body parser and as we're making JSON requests, we're going to use JSON middleware. So we use JSON here. So now the data will be available to us in request.body. So let's have a look. In users here, I'm going to console.log request body. So now let's run server. Reload the page. Go to sign up. Add some data. Submit the form. Now, if we go back to terminal, we'll see that we have all data passed to our route. So now we can work with it. Excellent. Okay, so now that we can parse input, we can validate it. For now, we'll do it right here in our route file and later we'll extract it. So we're gonna use validator. I'm gonna import validator package from validator. Let's install it right away so I do not forget to do it. Install save validator okay what we want to do is to run validate input function so we do validate input and we pass the request body to it so this validate input function will return some data for example it return val is valid and errors so we define constant here to be errors and is valid and is valid is just a shortcut. It's basically, you will see it in a minute how we use it, but it's much more readable. We can just do if not valid, then what we want to do, we want to response with status 400 with JSON containing these errors. So now we need to define our function and for now we're going to do it right here. So we have validate input and it takes some data and it's going to return object with errors and is valid and errors actually will be the empty object in the beginning and when we have some kind of error we can add field to this object so is valid on the other hand is just the check for is empty so if this object is empty then data is valid so we're going to use this is empty from lodash is empty Okay, so now we need to define our validation rules. We have four fields and all of these fields are required. So this is our first validation. So we do if validata is null and we take it for email, then we push errors email, we define new field, email is required. Or we could do it a little bit more generic, this field is required for now. So now I'm gonna just copy and duplicate these four fields here and, and change email to password. 
as well as change email to password confirmation and email to time zone. Okay, so all this fields required. And also we need to check that we have a valid email. So we do if not validata is email. So if not, if it's not email, data.email, then we want to add another error to our email, which is gonna be email is invalid. So very simple, basic validation rules. Another rule that we want to add is password matching, password confirmation. So let's do it right after our password confirmation. We do if not validata equals, and we compare two strings, data password and data password confirmation. So if they're not equal, we add errors to password confirmation. That tells us that passwords must match. Okay, and that's it for our validations. Let's save it and let's try it out. I'm gonna run server again. Go back to browser, I'm gonna reload the page and let's submit it. And we have 400 error. Let's have a look. And here we go. We have email, password, password confirmation and time zone as errors. That's exactly what we wanted to have. Okay, so our validation works and we got the error response from the server. So now we need to display these error messages on the client. So let's do this. So let's go to our sign up page. Oh, sorry, sign up form. And here where we have our on submit, remember that our action returns promise. So we can use it in our form component. So we can do it like this. Then if everything goes well, we will have some kind of event handler here. And if something goes bad, like in our case, we got a response with data in it, and that's gonna be our errors. And inside of it, we'll just do this set state errors to equal this data. So very simple, if we get the error status, we get the data here, and we set state errors to this data. Okay, so now we got this. If we go back here and try it out, let's submit it. And now we go to React here, and let's find our form. You'll see that we have errors, and all these errors are in our state, which is excellent. We can use these errors to display error messages in the form. So let's add errors here as well as an empty object. And also when we submit, the first thing that we need to do is set state for errors to be back to empty objects. So every time when we submit the form, we want to clear errors. And then if there are any errors, we just repopulate this state. Okay, so now let's display these errors in the form. So let's start from the username here. And it's very easy. What we do is we check. So let's uh, just grab this errors in a constant right here. We'll have errors, this state. Okay, so now that we have this errors, we can do errors dot username. So if there is such a thing as username in errors, then we want to display span with class name help block. That's the bootstrap class name for it. And we want to display this errors username. Okay, so let's save it. Go back to browser. Now if we submit the page, okay, nothing happens. And nothing happens because I forgot about the username. How fun is that? So let's go back to our uh, users here. I started with email, I forgot totally about the username. So let's duplicate it and it's username here. Okay, let's try it out again. So now if I submit, okay, we have this field is required. Excellent, we got our error message from the server. But that's not cool enough. We still need to add has error class to form group so it gets all red. So for that, we'll use another package, class names. So let's install it. And install it npm install save class names, which allows us to have conditional class names. I'm gonna run server again. And here in our component, in a form group, instead of using this class name form group, we're gonna use class names. 
And this form group is actually what we want to do by default, no matter what. But another one that has error class, it's conditional. So we have has error in the case when errors username is there. So if we have error in username, we have this class. And of course, we need to import class names from class names. Let's save it, go back to browser. Let's roll the page and try to submit it once more. Once again, the class name is not defined. Another typo, I think, class names, okay. Let's try it again. So now if I hit sign up, we have this field is acquired and it's red. Nice. So now that we have this beautiful style and let's do it for the all fields in this form and I'll do it behind the scenes like this. So I updated everything, added class names to all fields and the errors to all fields with proper field names. So now if we go back to browser, you can see that everything is red, which is awesome. Okay, and the last thing, the last final small touch is let's make the sign up button disabled when we are making requests and back to enabled when we're done. So it's very easy to do. We go to our component here and on submit, we'll introduce another field to our state. We'll call it is loading and by default it's false. So now when we submit stuff before we do that, we set state here is loading to be true. And when we're done, we set it to is loading to be false. Okay, so now we can use this is loading on our submit button. So we'll do disabled to be this state is loading. Let's save it, go back to browser. So now when we click it, you can see it right now because it's too fast, but it becomes disabled and then enabled. So to, to have a better look at it, let's go back to users here in our route and let's enclose it into set timeout. So we do set timeout for five seconds, I say. And now if we try it out, you can see that we have sign up disabled, all errors are cleared and when we're done, it's back to active. Excellent. I'm going to remove, of course, this set timeout stuff. Okay, we've done for this episode, so let's commit. Add server-side validations. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.